Hey guys, Battery Bob here. I'd like to welcome you to our new video series where we're going to talk about all things batteries. Hopefully you're going to like it. If you do, like the video, subscribe to our channel, and come back for more stuff. So our first subject matter will be about passivation and depassivation. Everybody's favorite subject. So uh, just hang on here. We'll go through a short little PowerPoint and uh, talk about it. All right. So what is lithium battery passivation? Well, this is basically something that is affecting all lithium thionyl chloride cells. It forms the instant that um, electrolyte is added to the cell, and it's the interaction between the lithium anode and the thionyl chloride electrolyte. It's a, it's a thin passivation layer that forms on the surface of lithium the instant the electrolyte is poured into the cell. And what it does, it's a protective layer over the anode, giving the cells a very, very long shelf life. As it thickens, as time goes on, discharge performance may be affected, and this is what we call a voltage delay. This little shot here shows how a voltage will drop rate right when a load is applied to a cell, and um, the time it takes for it to recover to a normal operating voltage. Once again, this is called voltage delay. So we have here a uh, little picture of the inside of a cell where we have the lithium on the left, which is the anode, and the carbon cathode on the right. The uh, light bulb is our high dollar graphic showing what happens when current is applied to the cell. So it's going to get brighter as time goes on here. You'll see. Wait for it. Anyways, before electrolyte is added to the cell, there's no passivation layer. Once you add thionyl chloride electrolyte, you have rapid formation of the lithium chloride layer, or what we call the passivation layer. And over time, more lithium chloride gets formed on the surface of the anode, becoming thicker, and it actually protects the anode from self-discharge, from decaying over time. So it's actually a good thing in the long run. When you try to uh, discharge the cell at a very, a very, very low rate, you have what's called ionic transfer from the anode to the cathode. And those are the little tiny dots there. And if it's very, very low, low rate, it can get through those pore areas in the lithium chloride, the big black dots shown on the left. So you don't really need to disturb the passivation film to deliver a low current. But as the current goes up, you need to break up that passivation layer to increase the porosity to get, allow more lithium ions to transfer from the anode to, to the cathode. As the, as the uh, light bulb gets brighter, the passivation layer has to be broken up more so more lithium ions can transfer from the anode to the cathode. It's, really, it's, it's actually called ionic transfer from the anode to, to the cathode. When you have a very high rate discharge, you really have to break up that passivation film more pore areas for more ionic transfer to take place. Once the uh, light bulb is turned off, no more current is applied, and then the uh, lithium chloride layer, the passivation layer, forms again, but because it was all broken up before, there's more surface area for more reaction to take place, so it actually forms thicker, and um, you know people see this by seeing more passivation with a used battery than a brand new battery. All right, so how do you depassivate a battery to make it so you can work with it easier? Well, basically what you're trying to do is eliminating the voltage delay when using the battery. So you're trying to get it from the uh, initial voltage drop over to the right, basically bypassing that big voltage drop. So when you start your tool, when you start your device, you don't have a massive voltage drop causing like tool failure, brownouts or whatever. The only acceptable method to depassivate is to place a load on a battery or cell. The load can be a resistor or it could be your tool or a device that uh, places a load on the battery. As long as it's fairly current, it, it, it works for uh, depassivation. The load should be relatively high for the type of cell. And you should continue the depassivation until voltage reaches greater than 3 volts per cell. We need to give you a warning about this, though, because you should only depassivate using resistance loading only. 
you can basically warm up the battery a little bit by placing it into a warm room or sunlight because that will help things. But never, never expose a battery to any heat source other than ambient heat. And the reason for that is, um, you know, heat sources, um, ovens, electrical uh, heat tape, stuff like that can fail and could potentially cause the battery to overheat which would actually result in an explosion. That could be very catastrophic. So never, never use heat to depassivate a battery. Because uh, depassivation techniques can vary with the user, we'll work with you, call us, call your battery supplier, and we can work with you on a case-by-case -case basis. Well, I hope you liked that. I hope it was informative. I hope it helps. Um, if you have any questions, give us a call. We'll talk about it. And if you like this video, hit like, Subscribe to the video and we will see you again.